Project Tiger Moth. Project Tiger Moth is amazing. From the set designs, to the score, to the narration, and of course the models. Project Tiger Moth was the dream of some dedicated Thomas fans led by Jacob Jarrett to recreate a full episode of Thomas the Tank Engine Friends using real Gage One replicas of the models we saw on screen all those years ago. I think it is unanimously agreed that this is one of the greatest feats the Thomas fan has ever accomplished. To understand why, we first have to establish what made Classic Thomas so amazing in the first place. The music. This probably doesn't come as a surprise. Every Thomas fan knows the genius of Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell's score, be it character themes or sing-along songs. Music portrays what the viewer is supposed to be feeling during a scene. For example, during Season 5's Haunted Henry, when Henry enters the forest, we are greeted by a score that captures the eeriness of the setting. The slow and low strings make your skin crawl, and the reverberated chimes echo all around. Another example is Season 6's Thomas and the Jet Engine. In this scene, Thomas is rocketing down the line. We are the fast-paced strings and the big fat brasses as our favorite blue engine rockets past the familiar locations. The runaway theme is paired with a William Tell overture, adding extra thrill to an already amazing theme. Thomas the Tank Engine's music was unique. It could capture the emotions of characters and make the audience feel engaged. I'm pleased to announce that the music in Project Tiger Moth does not disappoint. Isaiah Ferguson, or One Tram Band, has faithfully recreated the classic feeling of Mike and Junior's music. It made me feel like I was listening to a real episode of Thomas using themes and cues we have heard from previous episodes. Every theme, fits the tone perfectly. The standout theme, in my opinion, was definitely Toby's runaway theme. The music builds up with slow and low strings and woodwinds, reflecting Harold's theme from Toby and the Flood. When Toby is chuffing up the hill, we hear those instruments go into more unsettling tones, as if something bad is about to happen. Sure enough, Toby's pushed down the hill and we hear the runaway theme, its lower tone reflecting the seriousness of the situation. The theme ends when Toby comes to a stop outside its old station. Overall, the music is spot on. 10 out of 10. Up next, we have models and sets. This is probably one of, if not the most vital aspects to making a convincing Thomas episode. Every set in Classic Thomas was always fleshed out and detailed. If you looked extra close, you would probably notice something you haven't even seen before. The models are also very important. If the models weren't convincing, people would regard Project Tiger Moth as much as they do. The models in Project Tiger Moth look nearly identical to the models in the original show, and I give my props to Jacob Jarrett, Louis Cantone, Kobe Middleton, and Camden G. Justice for their amazing work on the models. I would also like to thank Marvin Jerry for their excellent set design. There's one thing that I want to talk about that would may anger a few people, so please keep an open mind. Project Tiger Moth sets were amazing, don't get me wrong, but it felt like we had never seen most of them before. For example, the yard in the beginning of the episode didn't remind me of anything that we had seen. So why was Gordon there? Only a small nitpick, but I wish we got to see some of the more classic sets like Natford Station or Wellsworth. Overall, the models and sets get a 9 out of 10. Next up we have stories and narration. 
You can't have a Thomas episode without a story. Every Thomas story has a solid plot that is based around a central character, location, or theme. In Project Tiger Moth, the story is pretty much Toby's sad, gets goods trained to construction site, runaway Toby, finds his home, Toby happy. Pretty basic storyline, but it's still short and sweet. Although I do like the basic storyline, I have a few nitpicks. Let's start with realism. Toby's old line connecting with both the main and Thomas's branch line? We are restoring and connecting your tramway with the main line and Thomas's branch line. Really? I, I, I don't understand how that would work. Now on to the narration. Robert McGee does an excellent job capturing the style of Alec Baldwin. His voices are fitting and fun and they really feel like Thomas. Some of the narration is a little clunky in some places, mostly with the changes in volume. Percy eyed a long line of freight cars, full of scrap and tree branches. You can take those cars back to the arts oh. hall. However, this is accurate to Alec Baldwin's narration in the fifth season. Overall, the narration and story are an 8.5 out of 10. On the topic of realism, the episode feels like an episode of the fifth season with over-the-top action and a few realistic moments here and there. However, there are a few minor flaws. As previously mentioned, Toby's line connecting with the main line and Thomas's line is a very confusing concept, and kind of goes against what is shown in David Mitten's map of Sodor. Also, I'm relatively sure Toby would be strong enough to push four or five trucks up a hill, especially since it isn't even that steep. But alas, the plot does have to move forward somehow. Overall realism, 6.5 out of 10. But to be fair, I would rate Thomas and Friends Season 5 the same. Now on action! This episode certainly delivers when it comes to it. Toby's Runaway feels as action-packed as an actual episode of the fifth season. It's certainly made all the more suspenseful with Isaiah's music and the wonderful model and scenery work. The cinematography is at its peak in this scene, with the close-up shot of the wheels as the train speeds down the hill and the suspenseful front view of Toby as he smashes through the bushes. Definitely one of the greatest elements of this episode. A solid 10 out of 10, in my opinion. Finally, we have world building. Season 5 is known for expanding parts of the island of Soda that we haven't seen before. There are many new locations such as Olstead Castle, Bertram's Mine, Kirk Ronan, Station by the Lake, and Boulder's Quarry. In Project Tiger Moth, we find the construction site and Toby's old line reopened once again. Without these aspects, the episode would not feel as Season 5 as it already does. A well-deserved 9 out of 10. In conclusion, Project Tiger Moth is an excellent piece of fan Thomas media. Everyone who worked on this project did a magnificent job, but with everything in life, nothing is perfect. Not even classic Thomas. I think it is fair to give Project Tiger Moth a solid 8.5 out of 10. A lovely first impression and a great episode is a kickoff to the rebirth of true classic Thomas. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to the end. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching and it would mean a lot if you uh, would leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, let me know in the comments if I should do more of these because this is really my first time trying to do one of these and honestly I would like to know how I did. <laughs> you can be honest, you can be harsh, you can say I sucked, but you know, as long as I know what to do better. Uh, I'd like to thank Connor for help with the script for this video. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have a great day. Goodbye.